Hello and welcome to Fighting Fifteens. I'm going to try to show in better close-up how to cut the gates um, for a mould done in low temperature silicon and um, I've obviously got the mould out of the can and I've highlighted those lines I mentioned for cutting uh, with a little bit of pencil just to try to make it a bit clearer on the video. Um, you have to see, I'm trying to work, trying to show a camera uh, without sticking my hand in a way, so uh, see how we go. So I start at my marker point and I've got a scalpel with a new blade, um, it's a Swan Morton, sorry, Swan Morton with a 10A and I'm going to stick it in about 30 degrees and cut round the line to create the channel for the mould. And I say this way round I can turn the mould and hold the knife steady uh, until okay it should just about get to you know, uh, all the way round and then I'm going to do it the other way and I'll similarly in about 30 and you are cutting basically a v-shaped channel to form part of the sprue of the mould. You're obviously not trying to cut through the mould otherwise it won't be much use. That's got through to the end and then you should be able to pull it out. Um, then cut the feeds, again as I explained, um, I cut them between the, the figures so the metal technically flows up there and then round that way uh, when you're casting. And um, just get my leather glove again so that I'm not ramming the sharp edge of a lino cutter into my finger because uh, you need a bit of resistance to blade and we're just going to show this. I could cut this out because I've shown you how to do this but this might show it happening a tiny bit clearer. Um, so you can get mold or gate forms that do the job for you but because molds are all different I've never found they're very useful. I needed to use one. So on this, you may notice it starts there and I push down so it's deeper towards the mould uh, where entrance where you drop the metal in. And occasionally I have to do a second So that's all the feeds cut for that. Now you need to cut the kiss gates for the horses on this mould. Okay, um, so on a marker. Uh, so again, again, you're in at about 30 to 45 degrees, up to about a millimetre down into the base, and you're trying to. Uh, this is extremely difficult. Um, so you're putting a cut there and similarly a cut by the main entrance points of the horse and as I said before normally I would go around and mark each do one each one in turn but I'm just going to do the one here and show you um, a bit more clearly so the idea is you start shallow and go deep to there so that you cut in, into and meet the cut you've already put into the horse base there. So we're going to push, press and draw, 
focus and draw deeper turn the scalpel and a bit of fiddling take the glove off now and pull that out and similarly where we put it in there So, very difficult to see, but as you see, the little channel, sort of gap, this will be there, so that the metal will come up here into there. In theory, on this horse, it will come up that one first because the metal will come up through there first, move along that way, go out that way, and in theory, while it's filling the horse, some air will escape that way, so, um, so you don't need to vent the horse. Sorry, thoroughly. Um, okay, so we're going to repeat that process all the way around the mould. So, if you do it one at a time, then you'll know where you cut into the, the mould. And if you tend to do all of them at once, you can forget. where you actually cut there and miss it, which is not very helpful. So these are you know, quite neat. Um, they may tear slightly down in there as you pull out the, the rubber because you haven't quite met with the knife, but that doesn't seem to make much difference. In fact, I think moulds by the mould maker pretty well always tear all the way up to that point because um, they've worked out that basically you can just put two cuts down and then pull the rubber out and it's only important there. Okay, so we're going to repeat the process. I'm going to come around a bit more to try to show a bit more clearly. So push and drag. quite quiet I'll just do that now in a future video I will also cover what happens if you've got these gates wrong you may not they may be too shallow there's nothing you can do about them you make them too deep but if they're too shallow and the figures not filling sufficiently you want to cut a um, into the other side of the mould to create a wider gate but you don't want to do it the same way otherwise you can create a really thick uh, feed which you have to cut off rather than snap off so we'll deal with that on troubleshooting at some point so again I'm only doing this like this to show individually each one as it's happened you can become far more efficient cutting all the initial cuts into the base first because you have to rotate the mold and turn the mold less so every time I do this I have to turn the mold and do that and then turn them all back. So you're trying, that's too many steps really for normal use. You just want to reduce those if you can. But perhaps I'll show where we've got, we're actually halfway around. So I'll show basically you go, because you've got the legs as markers, you can, sorry, There, then you move there and cut the next one. Then cut the next one, and so on. So you just need to do a minimal amount of movement. Help of actually looked at it through the magnifiers rather than the 
normal part of the glasses. You don't want to do, it's tempting to do the whole lot, but that just creates a massive cut, which will be weak um, later. And then you go back, and now you cut all the, the gates. So this is the quicker way of doing it, because, say, less small turning is involved. Now, I've always mentioned the vents. I usually cut the vents in anticipation of where it's not going to feed because it saves time. Because if you're running a stack of moulds, um, troubleshooting them individually at that point is a pain. It's far easier to do some preventive venting first and then you can just carry on running the moulds and they just work because every time you have to fix a problem, you end up with your moulds getting colder and so they may not behave the same way the next time you cast it, them. So it's possible to work this way because the scalpel makes it so much easier because it's just a very fine vein. A, a good craft knife will probably also work, but um, I confess I used to use scalpels for um, page layout when I was a journalist, and we used to stick pages, page layouts together with um, cow gum and paper, basically, way before desktop publishing. Um, so I've always used a scalpel for craft and, and work. It's just... Because the scalpel blades themselves are quite cheap. And so with the tool I've got for taking them off, I've stopped cutting myself quite so much. And, uh, yeah, so we're on the last one. Yeah. So press, draw down cut across there and the last one okay so there we are um, you can see hopefully all the little channels cut to the horse um, I think what I will do I'll do because I'm going to show this later I'm going to cut event in anticipation of things going pear shaped well, so we just cut into there to now so we can do a comparison with uh, all the other cavities so I think that's going to not fill properly so we're going to slice into there and we're going to cut this directly to the outside so last time I did a, a ring vent but because I'm I would normally do for this as well but I'm sort of trying to show you an anticipation and also this bit in theory it should feel but as the previous molds seem to show that um, it needed venting we're going to just kind of slight vent into there. Now, word on vents, ideally, you don't want to do that. Um, ideally, each vent should have its own exit because there's a risk that, say, if this vent fills up down to there first, this vent will not work. And you'll have to then cut a little bypass around that so that it works. But we'll see how that goes when we come to casting and another time. And that's it. That's a mould cut. Uh, apart from potential venting later when we see how horribly wrong it goes.